Okay. Hello? Hi, Mel. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you this, this, this afternoon, sir? I'm good. And you? I'm okay. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. We're speaking to the legendary Mel Carter. I'm Sherrard, your host. And Mel Carter is a gentleman. Um, I'm sure so many people know who he is, but um, if you do not know, he is one of his biggest hits was Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me. We're back in 1965. It actually made number eight on the Billboard charts, and he's one of my good friends. I'm so honored to have you on the show. How's your Saturday been coming along, Mel? I didn't get you. How's your Saturday afternoon coming? Saturday is, is pretty good, pretty good. Just catching up on uh, paperwork and stuff that you have to do, you know, that you, like, don't want to do during the week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you know, it's funny because um, you've been in the industry. Now, how many years would you say you've been in the industry so far? Wow. Uh like the first hit record was 1957. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, what, what was the name of that song? I Need You So. 1958, rather. I Need You So. Uh, uh, an over Ivory Joe Hunter uh, tune, and I did it with uh, Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that and that kicked your career off um, as a hit maker and officially being in the um, music industry. Well, it started, but then after that, I had another record with the uh, Doris Day's company called mm-hmm. I'm Coming Home, you know, and mm-hmm. that was in the, the early 60s. I think the thing that kicked everything off in terms of recording would have been when I uh, went to uh, uh, Sam Cooke's label, you know. Mm-hmm. So that no, started, no. that's in the 63. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, um, he wrote a song for you, and this is a very interesting story, uh, When a Boy Falls in Love. Now, tell us a little bit about how that transpired, because that was a hit record that he sang, but you sang it first. Yeah, he he wrote the song, and it was for uh, nobody on the label. Like, you had uh, Lou Rawls, you had um, the Sims Twins, the... Um, Johnny Marset, none of them could say as many words to a phrase as 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 Sam could and phrase it like he like he wanted it done, but me, I was the one who could, you know, I guess maybe mimic him in, mm-hmm. in a way. And mm-hmm. uh, the the uh, I got the song, and uh, one one important thing about the song that it's the first crossover record from a black owned company. Uh, and it went pop. And oh, it also, my God. Uh, it also launched his Derby Records, which was his pop label. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so back then in 1963, that was unheard of, a black artist singing a song that was a crossover hit? Black artists went through, you went through the black department. So your your records were immediately played, not immediately, but that they would prefer to play on the R&B stations. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. opposed to any pop station. And uh, oh. one of the things that I found it uh, um, like I should have been played on the pop station, and they wanted to make that. They hired uh, um, a white promotion guy and uh-huh. the whole staff, everything uh, was uh-huh. done because he wanted, it to, uh, he wanted it to be a pop record. You know? uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Now, now, what was it like working with Sam? Um, Cook, being being his protege, because you had a very interesting story about how you met him. He really came out and sought out for you. He sought out for you to sign you for the label. Is that correct? Uh, he did then, but we knew each other. We knew each other before. Uh, uh, we knew of each other. Uh, I was with the Robert Anderson Singers. That was a uh, popular uh, male gospel group, uh, and. Uh, Robert was located in in Chicago, and uh, we did those those junkets, those uh, um, like you do the uh, um, multiple artists on a bill. Then that's what oh. we we did. Uh, we were doing those things in Chicago, and that's when I met him. 
uh, mm-hmm. first in Chicago. And when I came out here to uh, Los Angeles, he knew of me and he knew about me. So uh, mm-hmm. he he came to there was a club. God, I can't remember the club down on Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Martin Luther King Boulevard, but it, it was a club right near Western, and uh, uh, I, I I had gone there and I think I sat in and he was there and that's mm-hmm. when he invited me uh, to come up to, to the office to have a meeting. You know. mm-hmm. Now, was business done differently back then as it is now in terms of record labels? Well, we had to go in and, and uh, then, uh, and that day you had to go in and re- and um, perform or audition live for the A and R department uh, at a record label. You know, no, I happen wow. to be the thing about I happened to go to uh, uh, Doris Day's label. Uh, she was there the day that I auditioned. And she was instrumental in having all of them, you know, signing me up. Wow. Now, um, now, um, Mel, when you, what song did you sing when you auditioned for him? I have no idea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it probably, uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this because then I thought I was this, this, this only jazz singer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so it had to be a, a number that you sang and laid behind the beat. You know, I'm sure it was, but I, I don't remember. <laughs> That's funny. Now, um, after he signed you, now what were the were there any perks immediately like when you get signed to a record label back then? Like, did he give you, um, you know, any front money to be able to promote yourself? Oh, how did it go back then? Where at Sam Sam's label yeah. or any yeah. other label? No, you didn't get you didn't get money for signing. Uh, I, I don't know what the other people got in, but even with. Uh, 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 Mercury Records or any other. I didn't get front money. Uh, mm-hmm. The the money that was that was put into the session, you know, and for promotion and all of that. Mm-hmm. Wow, and yeah, that's something. Now, um, after that, um, you know, your your career took off, and again, you were singing um, when a boy falls in love, but you were still um about a couple of years away from your chart topping major hit. Um, hold me, thrill me, kiss me. Now, who wrote that song? Harry Noble. That was written by Harry Noble. Now, did you enjoy performing that song, or how did you feel when you uh, first had to sing it? No, they had. I had to be directed to sing on the beat, yeah, and if you <laughs> notice that, you know, with the choir and every with the uh, uh, choral arrangement and everything like that, I, I only had the middle section where I could do maybe eight, uh, uh, eight or so bars, you know, with that freedom. But other than mm-hmm. that, it was on the beat, on mm-hmm. the beat. So, mm-hmm. and I had to stand in the studio, and literally, uh, the uh, arranger Nick DeCarroll, they 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 directed me, you know. Mm-hmm. Such a, uh, uh, Mel, that's such a beautiful song. I mean, it, it, that is, I don't know, I guess that's, um, that, that's likening to, in my mind, when Paul McCartney met Ringo, because that, vo- that song per- totally goes with your voice to me. It just is a beautiful song. I remember listening to it so often when I was a kid going to school and stuff like that, and it just ignited yeah. me. I know you probably have a different perspective because you sang it a million times, but for me, that, that song does something for me every time I hear it. Before they picked out, and I can't think of the A and R person. Uh, he's he's gone uh, now. But uh, I had bubbling under uh, records uh, mm-hmm. for Imperial. Mm-hmm. Um, but when they picked that out, they 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 had decided this was the kind of artist that I was going to be. You know. Uh, so, mm-hmm. it, so the marriage of the song and Nick DeCarroll, his arrangement that was that his that was his first uh, uh, writing assignment uh, mm-hmm. to be with me. So it was a, a first for me, first for Nick, uh, and uh, look, it was a jam. It, it came out. It's 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 a. I'm lucky to have a signature song like that. 
Oh, my goodness. It's so beautiful. Now, it's something funny, Amel, that I, I find very interesting as well in your career. It's such a fascinating career, and we're talking more about that. For those who just tuned in, we are talking to the iconic Mel Carter about his career, and as well as uh, some of the hit songs that he um, sang, and also being um, on signed to Sam Cooke's Darby Records back in the early 60s. Now, Mel, um, you also sang the same song that was, that uh, Frida Payton sang, and that was Band of Gold. Is that correct? Yes. And you made it a top. I, it's not well? the same. It's not the same song. The title is the same, but it's not the oh. same song. Okay. Uh, now, what's the difference in it? In terms of the, like the, the difference is is that it was a pop song uh, by the uh, uh, brothers. Uh, it can't. But it was a hit, uh, maybe mm-hmm. ten, twelve years before. Uh, and oh. then, uh, uh, let me give you a little scenario, okay? When we did "Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me," and that was the kind of artist that I was going to be, the the song that came after that was all of a sudden my heart singing, then you, you, you. So these were all of those kind of songs that had been hits, maybe ten years prior to that. And then they used mm-hmm. to call me uh, at the label the "Bring 'Em Back Alive" kid. Four aces, <laughs> the four aces. I, I remember the four aces did uh, uh, the song you just said. Mm-hmm. Band of Gold. Band of Gold. Mm-hmm. So, so you, in essence, they were oh no, no, I'm sorry. The the I'm sorry. The Band of Gold was done. Uh, oh man, this is he was he was a a, a golfer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awful. And he, I'm, and I'm, the, I'm the kind of guy that I'm that kind of guy that can say, you know, you're gonna make a you're gonna make a cake. Oh, is that a cake? What do you put in there? <laughs> you can give all the ingredients, but you can't make the cake, right? <laughs> now, did you did you um you took that song to the highest part of the charts when you sang it back in the sixties? Yeah, it, most every song that well, not most all of the songs that that I had was charted. You know, for mm-hmm. I had a pretty good run there for maybe five, six, seven years. You know, uh, oh. they they were all charted. Wow. Now, um, you know, one thing that's interesting also is, um, you know, not only does Mr. Mel Carter sing so well, you're also a prolific actor. I mean, I don't know how many times I have watched you on Sanford and Son, on Chips. Um, you've also been um, in a couple of movies as well. You've been in Quincy. <laughs> You've been on Magnum PI, and I remember in age is one of my favorite shows. Period, watching you there, um, and then also, um, you know, you've been in the movie Friday Foster and Chesty, Chesty Anderson, and so many others, even American Raspberry. Now, how did you transition from singing to doing movies? Usually, people don't make that smooth of a transition. Well, in 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 those days, that okay, the progression was that if you had a a hit single. All right. Then you moved into the the album category. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you had an album category, that meant that they would advance you to the visual aspect. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the uh, te- the commercials, the television, and the films. Uh, mm-hmm. The artists had to be able to at least you know do those uh, uh, kind of things. Uh, not every artist went into the visual aspects, uh, um, but that made the recordings even more profound and bigger. You know, mm. if you, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, um, I, like I got told you a couple about a month and a half ago. You know, watching you on ships, <laughs> my daughter and I, I had to tell her, I'd point out and say, "Oh man, that's my buddy Mel Carter. It was so awesome." to be able to see you in that. And I don't know how many times have I laughed seeing you in Sanford and Son, you know, and in good times, but that episode where Fred Sanford goes to the bank and you're the banker and he's trying right. to get a loan on his estate. I mean, come on. And and you you were the banker that um, was getting information to find out what was the value of his uh, junkyard. And, you know, you gave yeah. him the value of the junkyard. He was so upset about it. But, and you kept saying, Mr. Sanford, because he was being so insulted, but, was he the was he the funniest guy you ever worked with? He was one.
one of the funniest guys that I ever worked with. Uh-huh. But being in uh, 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 the kind of rooms and stuff that you eventually that we got to play, uh, we've I've played with some extremely funny uh, uh, comics uh, <laughs> where like. <laughs> or being backstage and watching them. Listen, I met man. I, when I was a, a teenager, I played with Moms of Maybelline. Oh no, Are you okay? Okay, really? that's a name. That's a name. I thought that would bring you out of the. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Um, <laughs> so you couldn't stand up. Like I've been doing around. this. It's it's you know like I can talk to him and I put you, but I've since I was a kid, you know. Uh, um, the um, they used to have these uh, uh, back in the day. You had uh, stage shows, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, movies, and then the uh, 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 performers, you know, were doing it. Part of a like the the end of a vaudeville circuit. Not that it was vaudeville, but it was, you know, like that's that's where the artists came to to the movie theaters, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, like. Man, I, and if you won contest, if you you know, I used to win all the contests at the at the uh, at the shows, and mm-hmm. then I got a chance to work with the people who were performing there, and mm-hmm. uh, I, that's where I met uh, um, little Jimmy Scott mm-hmm. uh, when he was with Buddy Johnson's band. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody that came that was on that circuit. That you know came through. So like I've I've been doing this since I'm a teenager, and even prior before that. You know? mm-hmm. Wow. Now you um you sang the song um that is a very very popular song, and um it was way back in the uh, '60s. Um it was it was sang first by Tommy Edwards, um All in the Game, but you sang it as well. Now how did it do compared to when Tommy first sang it? Well, my doing that had to be okay. One of the things of doing the uh, the PBS shows, okay, mm-hmm. I've done four of them, all right, and I, I think I'm one of the few people, if any, who had uh, done one of the shows where I paid tribute to uh, 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 somebody else, and that was mm-hmm. Tommy Edwards that that did that, and uh, the other guy. I can't think of his name. I'm going to sit right down and write myself uh, a letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, was the uh, so those weren't not uh, recordings of mine or releases. They were me doing tributes to those two uh, performers on the on that on the PBS shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and now speaking of shows, um, again, those who just tuned in, we are talking to the iconic uh, Mel Carter. Um, fascinating information about his career. Some of the most prolific people he's worked with, and, um, you know, Jim Gilstrap um, is one that just really is in awe every time I mention your name because, um, and I'm, I appreciate your humble demeanor because you don't realize how prolific it is to speak to you being in the industry and all of the different people that you've worked with and places you've gone and things you've seen. Um, you've been on the Ed Sullivan Show the Michael yes. Douglas show, uh, the Tonight Show, so on and so on. Um, what was it like as a black man being on one of those shows way back in that era, the civil rights era? Um, it, it was, as an artist, it was just taking all of that in, you know, like uh, um, you can look on – I have to tell you this, okay? Mm-hmm. I lived or are living my dreams. When I was a kid, this I used to dream about this. Wow. And then years later, those things that I used to I used to get whippings because I went to the movie theater and stayed past my time to be at home in the bed, you know. <laughs> now why did uh, you stay past your time? Because we, you know, if you go to a movie theater at 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 nine thirty or something in the morning, and then you're there at eight nine o'clock at night, mm-hmm. you know, you're not supposed to be out at, at out at that particular hour. And they knew, but but that's I had to have that feel. I I've worked opposite people 
that I looked on the screen and thought I would never see. Wow. You know? now, now, give me an example of a couple of people that you felt that way, that you almost had to pinch yourself um, because you were in this, you were in the same presence with them. I can give you names. Uh, I, okay, uh, Edward G. Robinson. Remember him? Absolutely. The be- at 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 a uh, I have a I have a picture of he and I where we were discussing acting at one of the awards uh, ceremony. I'm sitting next to this guy, and I'm talking, and he's telling me, you know, like giving me some pointers and everything like that. And I'm saying, wow, look at this. This is the man that I used to go to the movie and watch. Uh, I'll give you another name maybe you've never heard of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Now I can't think of it. Now I can't think of a name. The mm-hmm. you know the lady in the uh, in the forties that said come on up and see me sometime. Oh, oh no, no, yeah, you met. Oh, and I gotta, I, I'll get that. I'll get her um, information. I know who you're talking about. Now, now also you met Ella Fitzgerald, correct? Yes, I met Ella Fitzgerald. I met Lena Horn. Uh, <laughs> uh, I almost got a chance to do the uh, uh, Clifton Davis got the part though. Uh, to mm-hmm. do the part that she, you know, uh, with her uh, Broadway show, you know. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so I've met, I've met, I've, I've, I've been on stage with Dinah Washington. Wow. Uh, wow. I mean. Now, are you performing with her or you just got an award with her or what? No, I did. Uh, I, I was on part of the show, one of, part of her, one of her shows, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, so yeah, man, you 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 have lived the dream. You are living the dream. Um, and the funny thing about it is that you're still is that you're still touring and performing here and there. Is that correct? Yes, we haven't been, you know, uh, thus far uh, because of this, you know, the situation the way it is now. But mm-hmm. uh, yes, before uh, I had a pleasure of working with. Uh, 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 a year or so ago in uh, in the uh, uh, upstate California with a big show that that we're doing that and and I'm I'm writing right now I'm still writing music and stuff for our show Lenny Welch and I did you know mm-hmm. uh, and um, just just doing just writing and just doing all the stuff that I need to do man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Um, now uh, you know one thing that um. We want to talk about as well because my young listeners, um, younger listeners, need to hear this. Now, um, there's so much going on right now um, with not only the coronavirus, COVID-19, but also with the riots um, from the recent tragic death of um, murder of uh, George Floyd, as well as Breonna Taylor, and then as well as um, seeing um, the tragedy of uh, Ahmaud Arbery, um, and just the racism, you know, in general. Now, this is a man that has lived it, you know, with the civil rights movement and seeing so much um, in the 60s, 50s and the 60s and also being a victim of um, police brutality as well. So, Mel, tell me a little bit about how, what's your perspective when you see this rear its ugly head again here in 2020? Well, it, it, it's never gone away. It's never, you know, since I... I can tell you things from when I was a kid. It was there. It's never gone away. Uh, my my point would be right right now is to say, and this is what I really want to say, all you young people who are protesting and everything like that, get registered. Get registered to vote and then study your ballot of the people that you, you're putting in there and make that a sacred thing for yourself and then mm. vote. And then then. Don't just vote and leave it alone. It's an ongoing thing. Hold the elected officials accountable, you know, yeah. because you can yeah. march, you can do everything and, 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 and all those things out. And, and the other people, you have to register. You have to vote. If all of those thousands of people that are gathered to protest, we need you to register. We need you to go to the voting booth, and we need you to vote and take that as that a, that's a powerful thing that we can do, and and make it an ongoing thing. And there will there has been changes, 
and there will always be be changes, but we have to go further than just marching. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what was the spirit like in the 60s with all of the uh, civil rights movement? Is it the same spirit that you see, or do you feel the same spirit in the in the, uh, 2020 as you did back then in the 60s with Martin well, Luther King? Where, where I'm from in Ohio, and most most of the marches and most of the you know the sit-ins and all those things were done down south. That was mm -hmm. part of what we watched on on TV. But those kind of that kind of stuff, there was changing. The the, the changes were more dramatic than they are now because that was the beginning of uh, of the whole surge for this thing for this to happen. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, um, in, in your life and experience now, um, you had a few experiences um, with police and um, that led to some really traumatizing events. you care to share one of them, uh, something that happened to you in the line of police brutality? Well, I'll tell you the one that the most <laughs> uh, effective and a famous one with that, that was here. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's a thing that we say as Christians, but by the grace of God, go I. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I was a victim of the uh, chokehold here. And mm -hmm. uh, it was in 69, 1969, because I had a XKE, a Vaughn XKE, 69 or 70, right down there. And it was on on uh, La, Cienega, uh, La Cienega Boulevard near Pico. And the car, the uh, ignition in the car, everything went out, you know. And so it was in like in the middle of the uh, of the street. And the mm -hmm. cops came on and told me, to, you know, get my car moving. And I said, uh, sir, I can't move the car. It's, you know, it's out. It's not functioning, you know. And uh, this went on to, I told you to get out of, you know, to move the car. And I said, sir, I can't move the car. Well, get out of the car. So get out of the car. And I said, I'm trying to explain to you, you know, my explanation to him. And, and it was calm. It wasn't, you know, overdue uh, or outrageous or indignant. It was telling him exactly what it was. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing went to, led to another. And there were two other cops that came by and stood on the uh, curb, you know, mm -hmm. and this guy was going to write me a ticket. So he started mm -hmm. writing the ticket, and he wrote down in the middle, and then he started writing on each side at the bottom and around the other side. And then he said, you know, to sign the ticket, and I asked him what, began to ask him what were the other charges that he wrote around there. The next thing I know is that I'm coughing up blood and dirt, and I'm down in the gutter wow. because they had come back with the billy, billy club and put the choke hole behind me and choked me unconscious. You know. Wow. Wow. So you were still, when you woke up, you were still um, by the car or you were somewhere else? No, when I woke up, I was in the gutter. Oh. I, he, I was signing the ticket on mm -hmm. the on the uh, hood of the car. Mm -hmm. I was I mm -hmm. was in compliance with what he was saying. But You're then I was signing, and then the next thing I know is that I wasn't. I was in the gutter. Mm -hmm. I was coughing up blood and the dirt, you know. And they would, you know, had dragged me, drug me around. Not they, but he. And his mm -hmm. wife drug me around uh, mm -hmm. and put me in the car, you know, and mm -hmm. then the. Mm -hmm. Uh, the conversation and stuff that went on in uh, in the car with him taking me, you know, uh, to be arrested, you know, was just very unnerving. And we sued the city, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you win? Yes. Wow. Wow. Now, now a couple of things. And, and partially be too because his two of his 
the the two uh, policemen that were standing there watching never showed up at the at the uh, at the trial. But we wow. had to go through this whole thing. We had to uh, hire a lo- a young white attorney, right? Mm-hmm. We had to mm-hmm. rehearse like I was doing a a theater piece. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. Rehearse. And, 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 and I said, well, man, why do I have to do all that? He said, because the jury believes the police, you know. So every answer had to be controlled, you know. There was no emotion because naturally you would think that you, you'd want to, so, but there was no emotion. There was, you had to answer, yes, sir, you know, uh, and, and when I'm talking, just like I'm talking to you, you couldn't get excited. You know? Now, how did that? How, how were you? Um, of course, you were able to only do it because you're rehearsing it. But did you feel like when it actually played out in court that you had a lot of rage you were trying to contain based upon what the answers and oh, questions I, you were I, asking? Yes, I, 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 I knew I had a lot of uh, rage inside me, and that's the 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 attorney and everything knew that that would that was good, and that's what they expect. Right. That's what they right. expected, but because mm-hmm. of the control that I had, okay, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and knowing how to give exactly what happened and what was said and all of the others helped make mm-hmm. that jury believe that that happened. Wow. Now, um, Mel, how long, uh, what did this do to your voice and choke you out like that? One one of the things that well, I wasn't able to sing for a year, almost two years, over a year and a half, and the 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 uh, the very top of it, I lost some of the top uh, of the voice. Then it never came back. Uh, it hasn't. The falsetto is not as the is not as high as it could be. I'm not talking about even about the age, but that was for a long time because you, I can play you records uh, that I've made in in the '60s, opposed to that time, where mm-hmm. you know afterwards, where uh, things uh, you can you can tell we didn't go into those obligato things, you know. Mm-hmm. Wow! Wow! But so um. There, there, there was that okay. the fact that I'm, i that I couldn't sing. I couldn't sing for uh, a, over a year and a half. Wow. And now um, I had a was that I was going to ask you interject one thing really quick. Was that um um explained to the court or to your attorney that you couldn't sing because of the incident and the tragedy? Did they take that no, into consideration? No. When you do, you, you you you. you Oh, I, that I could hold something against them? No, you can't. That was a, I couldn't then. It was all settled. You wow. know, as to as to what what happened. My the uh, I was due to sign with Scepter Records, and mm-hmm. uh, it was scrapped. It was uh, all not so because of the mm-hmm. fact that I couldn't sing. I couldn't sing at all. Wow, wow. Now, that, and that's a lot of money that they uh, caused you to lose. But, but now, Mel, were you concerned about um, retaliation once you won? About what? Were you concerned about retaliation once you won the lawsuit? I, I don't know. I, I wasn't concerned about that. I, I, uh, mm-hmm. I, I just, I just wanted that to be the the fact that. I'm talking to this man, right, not in an irate voice, but trying to explain exactly what happened and what my, what instigated uh, the choking well, that, was mm-hmm. the fact that I asked what was the uh, other charges Perfect. that was written around the right. ticket. Right. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. But you know the thing is now that um is really troubling about this. Um, now tell me if you agree or disagree with this. Um, I had a guest on the show, a really good friend of mine, about a uh, three weeks ago, and um, we were talking about scenarios as being a black man. What are some of the ways we can be able to um, possibly defuse a police brutality situation or be able to put ourselves in a scenario 
where we can be able to come home safely to our families, which is the whole objective. Um, one of the guests on the show was saying there's really no way. If they have it in for you, they have it in for you. There's nothing you can really do about it. The other guest on the show was mentioning that the best thing to do is stay calm at all times. Um, mm-hmm. Many times he was saying um, black people, African Americans, get irate or get upset or try and challenge the authority of the police officer, and that's what escalates the situation. What do you? What would you say about it, based upon your experience? Well, I'm going to say this: uh, the three incidents that happened to me, and I could have been killed. In, in any of them, all right? Um, it taught me how to, and, and, and I have to say, not that I was an IRA person, but when, when you stopped, yes, sir, no, sir, that, you know, give the do, give no, sir, yes, sir. It doesn't take away the fact that you're a man. It doesn't take away your dignity. It doesn't take it away. It just... You know, there. What is it? he who lives uh, to run away lives to fight another day? Uh, mm-hmm. You can you can settle all your things in court. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't settle it there on that on the street. Right. You can't sell it, settle it there inside your car, yelling back and forth. You can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You got to think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that may, it may, you know, maybe the younger people are looking at, you know, the older people, well, that's what they did in their day, and that's so and so. Well, but you know what? It's it's the part, we're never going to get anywhere, uh, you know, it, in the rage. We're going to have to think and match, okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on that level, match, okay? So, me, yes, sir, no, sir, thank you, sir. Wow, wow, and that's some that's some pure wisdom, pure wisdom. Because um, they have the advantage anyway, because they have the law backing them up, you know, mm-hmm. on the street. And people don't realize this. There was a question asked: Who has more power, the judge, the attorney, or the police officer, and or the jury? And it turned out the answer is the police officer, because basically on the street, he's judge, jury, attorney, and all of that. He makes yes. all those decisions. That's mm-hmm. going to be ultimately that um that it, certain decisions he makes, you know, will be predicated on whether you make it to see the judge or whether mm-hmm. it's all settled on the street. So I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Mel, and um, I'm so sorry it happened um, to you. But um, I'm thankful that you were wise enough to live to fight another day um, with that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, we are talking to the iconic Mel Carter um, in part in wisdom with us and based upon his experiences. Now, Mel, um, one thing you've never done for, uh, being on the Sherrard show is um, you've never sang one of your beautiful songs for my audience. I know we were scheduled to have that done um, a couple months ago, but um, you, you, we, you couldn't have you as a guest because you had other business to, to take care of. But is that asking uh, too much? If there's anything, you, my favorite song, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, is there any way you no, can No, man, there's, there's, there's no music here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter with the voice you have. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, that's the that's the point. Because see, you're in the portals of history. Um, you know, I've seen when I was um, see, I was, I was born. The Lord blessed me with a photographic memory, so I don't forget anything. And when I, when I was a kid, you know, um, as I told you uh, before, you know, growing up, two three years old, your music, Sam Cooke. The Carpenters, The Three Degrees, um, Isaac Hayes, um, on and on was playing in the mornings when my mom was getting my sister ready for kindergarten and stuff. And I'll never forget how I felt as a three as a three year old with a sunny morning in Chicago, which was rare, to be able to hear your music playing as I was getting on that. That was part of my life that'll never change, and that's why that 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 era is so special to me. And I always joke with my wife and say, you know, she asks me, do I know the name of this song? I say, it's this past 1979. I don't know it. But the point is that um, I just, you're, you're in the portal of history, so anything you sing, Mel, will be captivated by the audience um, for years to come on the show. It doesn't well, matter. I have to, okay, let me say this. Let me say this. Uh, I would like to invite all your audience to come to uh, to my site, mel-carter.com, and you can hear the uh, samples of you can hear 
hear samples of the music and slide, uh, the, watch uh, samples of the DVD thing uh, that I've done uh, and and all the other stuff that's on there, the information that, that, that you can get in reference to me, and that's mel-carter.com. Okay. Okay. Oh, and and, and singing something, I wasn't prepared for this. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you know, when when we're in church, you say you know, sort of to be also ever so, uh, prepared. You know, that is correct. That is correct. Let me and give I you. Was... Let me. Let me. Let me give you a note or two. They told me be sensible with your new love. Don't be fooled, thinking this is the last you'll find. But they yes. never stood in the dark with you, love. When you take me in your arms and drive me slowly out of my mind. Now there you are. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. It took me back. It's like it's 1965 all over again. Wow, well, Mel. Um, unbelievable. I want to mention one other thing. Wow, unbelievable. You know, there's um every time I post something about you on my page, there's a couple of ladies that are always standing. And and they didn't ask me directly, but they were they were asking somebody, anybody know how to get in contact with Mel Carter? Anybody know how to get in contact with Mel Carter fans? They just it's it's a it's a lady in uh, British Columbia that is just so nuts about you now. Just wanna let you know that. Yeah. Well they can so come to it. they can come to the site. Uh, and, and 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 it gives you a it gives you a contact number, you know. Okay, okay. I'll I'll, um, I'll I'll direct them to that. Now, one other thing is, um, I have to mention that people need to know. There was a song that uh, Mel wrote recently. Um, that you wrote that is um, it's an anthem song. Um, and I was having uh, Jerry Butler and all my other friends listen to it because it's a song that's an anthem based upon what back then it was based upon um the gang killing and all that in Chicago and all around the world. But I think, you know, that song is a theme song for twenty twenty because twenty twenty has been such a tumultuous year so far and just so trying. Um what do you think about that uh, song that I'm speaking about? Well, I have to say, let me, let me say uh, I wrote it with uh, a writing partner by Alex Gerber. Uh I have have to say that because he wants, you know, he he deserves it anyway. It's called "Raise the World, Sing Louder Than the Gun." Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I think one of the the uh, when we first did the song, it was you know like unto the title "Raise the World." We are the world, and they had a lot of stars and uh, on on the recording, and it was for feet it for it was for feeding the hungry. So mm -hmm. uh, last year i released my version of the song and and it's an anthem and it addresses all the issues that that are happening now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has always been happening and and we we uh, uh it's it's we can all raise the world's consciousness you know mm -hmm. and sing we can all there's that's one thing that everybody can do when you even when you can't sing and you get in a, a group or a choir, you can sing, sing louder than the gun. Make make that we can we can change anything if we move and bind together. We can, you know. That is so true. That is so true. Um, Mel, um, I've taken up enough of your time. I am so honored. You just made my day. Um, all things speaking. To I just you. want to say. Can I say this? Let me go sure. back to this. Hey, all the young people, all, all and old people, but all the young people who are marching, who are, are are making a difference, get registered and vote and mm -hmm. and, and 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 make it serious about who you who you're voting for. Mm -hmm. and, and then after earlier. that, you know, mm -hmm. keep it going, keep it going, hold those. Elected people that you've elected, hold them accountable. That is so correct. And like you said earlier, do your research. Do your research yes. on yes. this candidate. That is so true. Um, now, you're on Facebook. Is that correct? You have a Facebook that can, people can yes. keep up with you. Yes. Yeah. And what is it? Uh, 
On Facebook? Yes, sir. It's Mel. It's Mel Carter. That's that's all I know. <laughs> okay, just gonna make sure. Make sure. Um, now, also, I want to say this um, on a personal note. Um, Lana, Lana Raw said hello. Told me to tell you for oh, hello. Yeah, yeah. She's gonna be. Um, she's scheduled to be on the show um, next week as well. Uh, speaking uh, about her book, Love Is a Hurting Thing. Um, yeah. For my audience, I want to just let you all know. Um, you may not appreciate this moment now, but I hope and pray you appreciate it soon. When you speak to someone that is iconic as Mel Carter, you have to thank God for being God because this man has done it all in the industry. Um, he's opened so many doors with his music as well as with his acting. And just being a gentleman and a scholar, if you cannot learn from him um, now, there's something wrong with you because I'm, I'm so thankful to God to be able to have known and know Mr. Mel Carter. Thanks so much for being on the show. Hey, sir. man, I'm, I, I am. It's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you. And, and uh, um, what can I say, man? <laughs> Um, well, Mel, you know, you have an open invite to come over for dinner anytime. You know that. So All right. I invite you. So, you know, whenever you just show up with a, um, a spoon and a fork and say, Sherrod, I'm coming for dinner, then you know I'm just going to be <laughs> wide open because you, you, are, you are a friend of the family. You know this. Yeah, man. You know, we'll let's, let's, hope that we yes, get, let's hope that we get to that, that message out there for these, the younger people. I never used to say yes. that. You know the yes. younger people, but I, I I think you know in watching that's that's what I've been watching, and I and I yes. watched one of the uh, organizers. I don't want to hold you organizers mm-hmm. the other day, and they were interviewing mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. and he 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 made it as I think not a we. Wow. You know, he mm-hmm. made it an I. I don't think he realized that's what he was doing, but you know, like I always say, the you know like the Constitution says. We, the mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. not them, those, mm-hmm. us. No. It's we, Excellent. all of us. You know. Let me ask you a question now that you brought that up. That's very important. Now, why is it? Do you think that um, even having Bill Clinton in the office, going back to JFK, having President Obama, and now Donald Trump, which that's a moot point, but. Why haven't they changed or petitioned to change in the Constitution that the black man is listed as 315? Why is that? It, you know, everything, if, if, because you, somewhere you would have to give that credibility that there was an, e, there was an, an equality. And mm-hmm. you still have mm-hmm. people on 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 that note that do not, do not feel that way. So I think you now that that's where the problem starts from. Because if it's there, there's people, and you know this, um, I'm sure as well, that when you were growing up, if something appeared on TV, people believed it as gospel. You couldn't tell them anything. If it appeared mm-hmm. in the newspaper, it was gospel in their eyesight. So many people can argue and say, well, you can spice your quality all you want, but for black people, but the Constitution says that it, there are three fifths human, so why would I even think otherwise? So until they change that, I don't think we're going to get too far on our cause beyond what's written. Well, I think uh, I, I would say this. I think we're going to get that. If we have to go there, when we go there and change that, with all of the laws, there's a lot of. But you know, I was t- talking to my son today, and I was trying to tell him. He said, "You, it should be one law that's universal." Uh, universal, and I said, "No, it can't be because you have, you have the cities, you have the state, you have the federal, you you have the sheriffs, you have the municipal uh, police, you have all of that, and they, and and each one of them have their own charters of things that they go, and that has that's where voting." And bringing up, putting it on the ballot, that's where that changes things. Hmm. Mm. Very good point. Very good point. Wow. Mel, mm-hmm. thank you so much. I'm going to be, oh, um, you, I'm going to be posting um, this interview, um, ladies and gentlemen, on the Sherrard Show. You can see it on Apple TV as well as Roku. Or check, check your local listings um, as Mr. Mel Carter has graced us with his with his appearance in honor to show today on the Sherrard Show. Hope you all have a wonderful Saturday. Be safe out there. Be prayerful. And we'll see you on our next episode. Thank you so much. Raise the world's voice.
size one Sing like 